we are on here right now. So um, let me see. Maybe. Okay. So maybe we, we can start a little bit um, discussing news. Maybe it will take longer and we will need more than just um, one class, but um, it's going to be interesting to, to analyze a little bit the paper. It's really new. So we, we have like a lot of, of things to, to learn. Okay. So let's start then with the idea behind Windows. Um, okay, so let's see. Because before before this, when we worked with snarks. Yes, the problem was, for example, we, we have like um, bitwise operations. And so if we wanted to assert that a variant was, was Boolean, we had to write a constraint like this, but B was an element over some um, finite field. Okay, so typically, if we work with snarks, fr had like 256 bits, and that was kind of overkill because we are using uh, 256 bits to represent the variable that just takes one bit. Of course, um, in snarks, uh, what we could do is um, work with smaller fields. So, for example, we could work with this field. And so now. Uh, uh, sir, I don't yeah. think the camera captures all your screen. No, what 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 what's it capturing? Oh, oh okay. I, I can have see it now. Okay, but um, right now. Yeah, it's cool yeah. now. It's yeah. cool now. Okay. So, as I was saying, we can now work with. Uh, smaller fields. And then if we wanted to, to have cryptographic security, we used a field extension. So for example, in this case, we used the degree three extension. And that way we, we achieved security because we, we drew the challenges from directly from um, the, the field extension. So really a lot of things we work in with cryptography are based on bitwise operations. So um, the problem we had is, for example, if we wanted to prove some hash function like uh, SHA-3 or, or Blake, the problem was that there was like a huge overhead to represent the bits. And of course that uh, impacts a lot in, in memory use, in the memory footprint. And uh, the other thing is we have to do all the operations in the finite field. And not, that, not, not necessarily do we have like a, an, an, an efficient arithmetic. Typically, we would like to do things in, with simple operations, just as um, XOR or some shifts, because that's um, really faster. So um, how can we go better? So Binius tries to give an answer to many of these, these problems. 
So to, to be able to understand this, first we have to work with, or understand what binary fields are. Okay, so binary fields are of the form F2 to the N. So the, the size of the field is uh, two to the N. Okay, the simplest field is of course F2, which simply contains zero and one. And we do operations are modulo two. So um, what we have is then that if we take one element and we add the other, it's easy to see that we have like um, four possibilities. We have zero plus zero, which is zero, zero plus one, which is one, one plus zero, which is one, and one plus one, but this is two, and modulo two, this is zero. So if you look at this, this is simply the XOR operation. And if we want to multiply the numbers A times B, we have, of course, zero times one, um, zero, one times zero, zero, zero times zero, zero, and one times one, one. So this amounts to the AND operation. So the good thing is that in binary fields, you will see that operations can be really efficient. So of course, two is a prime number, so this, this field is easy to understand. Now, how can we build fields of size two to the n? Yeah. So these fields are built by doing an extension of the original field. So um, what we do to build extension fields is um, first we consider the polynomials defined over the finite field. Okay, so these are the elements of these are just a0 plus a1x plus a2x squared plus etc. And a0, a1, an all belong to f2. That is to say, the coefficients can only be 0 or 1. Okay. And we will see that precisely we can use field extensions as a vector space defined over f2. So we will have like some basis for some elements, and we can express any any of the elements in the extension field as a linear combination where the scalars for the linear combination are taken from the base field. Okay. So first we don't see the polynomials. Then what we have to do is select an irreducible polynomial over F2. So um, depending on the polynomial we choose, we will get a, a different extension. So we, we can choose a polynomial of degree two, and then we will get a quadratic extension, a polynomial of degree three will give us a QA extension, and so on and so forth. Of course, in, in the case of uh, quadratic extensions, maybe this would not be the case, but in other cases, you have like multiple choices of the, of the polynomial, okay? But we can show that all these uh, extensions are essentially isomorphic. So we, we don't have a, a problem with the, the choice. Okay, so for example, 
um, the following polynomial m of x x squared plus x plus one is irreducible over f2. So this polynomial has um, no roots over f2. So we cannot express it as a product of simple polynomials. Why? Because if we look and, and have, okay, m of, of zero, okay, this is just zero plus zero plus one, and this is one, and if we do m of one, we have one plus one plus one, and this is also one, okay? So this polynomial has no roots. If you look at these, that this polynomial on the other hand, x squared plus one, this polynomial can be reduced. In fact, um, this polynomial is written as x plus one squared. This is because we always do operations modulo two. So in this case, we would get like something like this, but remember that two is congruent to zero modulo two. So it's interesting because in, in this case, um, square is just summing the squares of, of each number, okay? So now how, how do we build the, the quadratic extension? Well, we, we take the polynomials and we, we, what we are going to do is take the remainder by the irreducible polynomial. Okay, so in the end, what we get is that um, the polynomials can be here defined over, over this. This will be our F2 squared, will be linear polynomials, okay? Because they have to have a degree less than X squared. So our, uh, our polynomials here will be, of the form like this. So if we take first, remember these, these coefficients belong to F2, that is to say they are either zero or one. So if we have like um, two elements, P plus Q of X. This is simply A zero plus B zero plus A A one plus B one times X. So this is easy because we do the addition component wise. And this addition, remember, is the addition over F2. So um, this is simply um, an XOR operation. So this, this field has four elements. So the elements are zero plus zero times X, one plus zero times X, zero plus one times X, and one plus one times X. So these are the four elements. We can easily view these elements as bit strings. So we can view this as zero, zero, one, zero, zero, one, one, one. Okay, and if we take two elements, addition is simple. XOR. So if we, we take two elements, which we can view directly as bit strings, if we want to say A plus B is simply A XOR B, this is as um, bit strings. Okay. Multiplication is a little bit um, 
more complicated because if we do want to do p of x times g of x, the thing is, okay, this is a0 plus a1x, b0 plus b1x, and this is simply a0, b0 plus a1, b0 plus a0, b1, x, plus b1, a1, x squared. The only thing is uh, here we have a degree that is larger than what we have. But if we take a look, remember that x squared plus x plus one um, is our irreducible polynomial. So what we can do is then like replace x squared or subtract x squared. One interesting thing is that uh, modulo two adding or subtracting is the same because it's always the XOR. So in the end, what we can do, do is use the reduction to change this x squared by x plus one, okay? So in the end, what we get is something like a0, b0 plus a1, b1 plus a0, b0, a0, b1 plus b1, a1 times x. Okay, so this is a multiplication. It's kind of weird, but it still works. And this has all the properties of, of fields. Okay, so um, of course we can continue doing like extensions and then choose other uh, irreducible polynomials. So for example, um, we could also have like m of x. I think it's um, I think that x to the eight plus x to the four plus x to the this gives a um, degree five, uh, degree eight extension, but let me check. So in the case of eight, yes. And these, um, so in, in this case, what we would have is that an element is a bit string of length eight. That is to say, it's a byte, okay? And in fact, this irreducible polynomial is used in the advanced encryption standard for example, what we do the S boxes. Okay. So, what we can do is build extensions as big as we need. And we have like very simple addition. And multiplication starts getting like a little bit um, convoluted, but still we, we can do it. But maybe we can build extensions in a different way that give us like um, easier operations. And on the other thing, we get like a nice embedding. So what we would like is in principle to have something like, okay, first I start with F2 and I include this then into some extension and this is included into this extension and that we can view the extensions in a very, very natural way um, just by having like a very trivial uh, embedding, which in some cases is, is not that easy to, to achieve perhaps. So, um, in this case, what we are going to do is instead of um, 
building the extensions by finding like um, these um, irreducible polynomials, invariant polynomials, and that we will try to work with um, multilinear polynomials. We will see that this gives us a, an advantage. So, um, So if you remember, maybe when we um, studied pairings, we saw that they had to work in the case of PLS over a degree 12 extension of a given field, and that we could build it either just as a direct, a direct degree 12 extension, or in many cases, it was better to build it like an extension two over an extension three over an extension two of the original field because that gave like um, nicer arithmetics. Okay, so the idea here is the following. We start with um, F2. So F2 is our simplest pin. We have zero and one, and the operations are like straightforward. Then what we do, is we we build uh let's call it um this would be like tau zero tau one is simply f2 or the polynomials over f2 and we use this this irreducible polynomial Okay, so this looks like what I had before. Um, here, our elements will be these four. And as I told you, we can view these as um, bit strings. Okay, so one, one nice thing that we can already see here is that the elements of F, F2 can be included like in a very simple way as elements of F2 because really if we have like uh, zero over F2, we can view it as zero zero over tau one and one we can view it as um one zero over tau one so it's interesting because we can easily put the elements of f2 inside the extension we just have to add zeros okay so this, this is nice. And besides, if you want to multiply uh, F2, an, an element of tau one by an element of tau zero, then this is easy because what we can do is multiplication component wise. So if we have like A belonging to F2, and we want to do, um, and we have B over FP squared, then if we want to do A times B, this is simply doing A times B0 plus A times B1 X. So we only have to do like two multiplications over F2. So, this, this is also interesting because if we want to multiply an element of, uh, of some field by an element of a subfield, uh, the number of operations depends on the degree of the extension over the subfield, okay? Well, then of course we can build um, a new one just by Okay, I have tau two. So then what I do 
is I consider this irreducible polynomial, okay? Which we can view, uh, as a matter of fact, as F2 over X0, X1. And we take like the equivalence relation this way, okay? So here we can view uh, an element in tau two is of the form a if you want low plus a high times um, x1, where these, these two belong to tau one. So if the first could be represented as um, two bits here, what we get are four bits. So we get zero, 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 one, zero, 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 one, zero, zero, one, one, zero, 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 one, zero, one, zero, one, zero. And of course, we here we have like 16 possibilities. Again, what we can see is that um, if we like break the, the bit string in, in half, we see that each each half is one of these. Okay. Um, and then what we can do is continue just by saying, okay, TK is TK minus one, XK squared plus XK minus one, XK plus one. And so this way we are always building from, from the previous um, step. And we always have that uh, if we break like the bit string in half, each of the halves can be seen as an element from the previous field. And if we have one element from any of the previous field, we can always embed it in a natural way just by adding zeros. Okay. Um, so what we are going to do is in fact, any, any element will be a multilinear polynomial, which is going to be like A0 plus A1, X0 plus A2, um, X1 plus A3, X0, X1 plus A4, um, X2 plus a five x zero x two plus so what we get is this multilinear polynomial okay and we can always make the, the identification of a zero a one a two a n as a bit string okay so we, we have like a very nice way of representing um field elements so the good thing is um, addition over tau k is simply xor which is really nice because in, if we just have to do xor then we don't care if there is carry or, or, or not because there is really no carry, okay? So that simplifies a lot the, the addition. So the addition is really, really fast. 
Um, on the other hand, multiplication is a little bit uh, more complicated because um, what we have to do is if we have, okay. And we have these two. Remember that what we have is these elements all belong to the previous extension in, in this in this tower. So when we do P of X times Q of X, of course, then we get a low times below plus a high below plus b high a low xk plus and then we get a high b high xk squared but here we can do again the the trick and remember that we have the polynomial uh, reduce using xk squared plus xk minus one, xk plus one. Okay, so the thing is this, this way, we had a multiplication over tau k, and this is reduced to some multiplications over um, tau k minus one. So what we can do is, again, repeat like the same trick, break each number in, in half, and do the multiplications over the smaller p and then to smaller p. So here what we use is recursion. Of course, in, in practical terms, we, we can have like, for, for some of the towers, uh, pre-computed table of, of all the possible results. And so what we do is we, we do recursion a bit, we, we get until we can look for the answers in the lookup table, and that's it. So the interesting part here is that we have very efficient um, operations. Perhaps multiplication isn't as nice as addition, but still it, it works um, really nice. And remember, we have this nice property of having like um, the zero pad, and so we we can do that very easily. Okay, so this has to do a little bit about um, the fields. Then, in order to to build the the snark, we will need us to obtain some. Um, polynomial commitment scheme. So we will have to see what's the best way to, to build a, a commitment. And the idea here is just by adapting breakdown. So before doing that, first we, we will have to introduce what we call the tensor product. Okay. Um, so, it, what, what we will have is we have, a, suppose that we have a multi-linear polynomial with uh, n variables. 
Okay. We, we saw that multilinear polynomials were really nice for the subject protocol. And I think that in the subject protocol, what we could do uh, was have a way of efficiently summing or, 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 or checking that the sum of the evaluations of the multilinear polynomial over some set was equal to some number. And we could do it just by evaluating. Uh, as a verifier of the polynomial at a random point. So to, to do that, um, we will select a random point, R0, R1, Rn minus one. Okay, and so if, if you wanted to do the, the evaluation at the random point, we could think, for example, we have our um, polynomial A0 Lagrange 0 of X0 uh, Xn minus 1 plus A1 L1 X0 Xn minus 1 plus so we, what we could do is kind of see our polynomial as um, written in these um, Lagrange bases. And um, if we wanted to do P at this random point, this was equivalent to having, okay, our vector of coefficients times the Lagrange polynomials at the random point. Okay. Um, and if we um, look at the form of these um, Lagrange polynomials, we had that they were of the form, the product of uh, the I times the, the Lagrange polynomial. This was just something of, of this. This for okay. So we multiplied over all, all variables, and so we had something of this for okay. And these EPI are either zero or one. And correspond to the binary decomposition of i. So i is simply the sum of two to the j times pj. Okay. So if if we do do the operations, we would have like l zero of r is simply. Uh, one minus R one, one minus R two, one minus R three, and if we look at L one of R, well, well, zero one two, this would be simply R zero, one minus um, R one, one minus R two. And then we could proceed all the way until the last one, which would be R0, R1, R2. Okay. So what we can define is something called the tensor product of one minus R, R, and this is just um shorthand notation for okay first 
you have like one minus a zero, one minus a one. Then you have um, R zero, one minus R one, one minus R two. And then in the end, you get R zero, R one, R n. Okay, so this corresponds to the um, evaluations of the Lagrange basis polynomials. The good thing is that this tensor product, in fact, can be evaluated like um, really fast. Why? Because we can start um, from, let me see what's the best way to, to go here. Maybe we can start with one minus Rn and Rn. And then what we can do is we have like then one minus Rn and Rn minus one. And so we, what we have is something like um, one minus Rn times one minus Rn minus one. So here we have this, then we get one minus Rn Rn minus one, then we have Rn one minus Rn minus one. So this is another block. And here then we, we have like Rn Rn minus one. Of course, then what we can do is continue. all the way up until we, we get to, to the first label. So the good thing is this can be computed on in a number of linear operations. Yes, with the uh, total number of coefficients the polynomial has, okay? So, here, what we are going to do then is interpret this as just doing all these uh, multiplications. And if you want, you can do it also like um, recursively. So if we have something like r equals zero to, to n of one minus um, R I R I. This is simply like having one minus R zero. And here what you get is the tensor product of I equals one until N of one minus R. And then we paste R zero and then I equals one. So this way we can get something like um, really, really efficient to calculate. So uh, if we want to evaluate the polynomial at this random point, what we do is we obtain like the Lagrange basis polynomials, evaluate it at R, and then we do this. Um, uh, product between two vectors, okay? Um, okay, so first, first ingredient tensor product is there. Then, um, something we used but we never clarified is um, some things related to, to codes. So if you remember at some point we saw uh, read Solomon codes, but now I am going to make it um, a little bit more, more explicit. Okay, so some, some notions. First, um, a code uh, of 
block length n over some we call it alphabet a is a subset of a to the n. So in, in, in our cases, what we would like is maybe our alphabet to be some, some field. Okay, so our code will be something like a0, a1, an, where each element corresponds to, to an element in, in the Okay. Then there are some kinds of codes which are like uh, really nice, which are like called linear codes. Okay. So the interesting thing is that if we have like um, two elements in the, in the alphabet and then we sum them and then we do the, the, the encoding, that would be the same as first encoding each of them and then adding them certain codes, okay? So um, we will have like, um, in general, um, K, N, D, uh, code over uh, field F, is a k dimensional space of f to the n such that the distance between two, two elements, let's call them z0, z1 is always greater or equal to, to d. Okay. Um, so the thing is, we have like two code words, and these two code, code words, if they are not the same, then they um, differ in. Uh, at least default. Here, what we are going to consider is something which we call the Hamming distance. So, the, the Hamming distance is I have my, my code C0, C1, Cn, and uh, E0, E1, Bn. So, what we can do is count the numbers of times that dk is different to c k, and this is our, our distance, okay? So, uh, one of the most popular codes was, um, or is the, the Reed Solomon code. So, if we originally had a message that is a zero, a one, a k, what we can is uh, interpret, uh, and we have like a, a set s here on my points a zero, s one, s n. Okay, what we could do is say that, for example, a, Z, a zero is some polynomial evaluated at um, a zero. This is the polynomial evaluated at S1. And then we have SK, AK is simply uh, this. Okay, oh, well, just to be, I have to use K minus one. So what I could do is kind of find the interpolating polynomial and then of course uh, add like the redundant information just by, so here I get interpolate. 
to obtain uh, k minus one degree polynomial. And then of course, what I do is supply uh, or encode just by evaluating over the whole set. Okay, so I give like redundant information. So um, in the case of uh, read Solomon code, if we have like um, m k, the the distance in this case is m minus k plus one. Okay, so this is the distance. This is because uh, since we are interpreting our messages as uh, degree k minus one polynomials or k um, k minus one um, polynomials can coincide at most in k minus one points. So unless they are the same the distance, you point uh, at least n minus k plus one, and uh, what we call is the ratio between K and N, we call it the rate of the code. And we, we saw something which was the inverse of the rate, which we call um, the log factor. So it's interesting because um, we can use the with sort of code to, to code in a really efficient way. If you remember, we could interpolate very fast by doing uh, BFT. And then, if we wanted to evaluate what we could do, it's use the energy. So, the good thing is uh, to, to encode, we can use the RFT. Okay. And uh, in Minus, you have a, a very efficient version of the RFT. So they, they use like something that came in a recent paper. And so we have this way of encoding really fast if we have the, the, the FFT. So what we're going to do at some point is um, encode our polynomial because we, our construction will be uh, similar to what we did in Fry. It has some subtleties, but um, We will see that we, we will use again read Solomon encoding at some point, and that we are going to use also the, the Merkle trees. So then um, the thing is, of course, maybe we are working or we would like to work over a small field, but to achieve cryptographic security. Uh, we will have to um, work over a larger field, over an extension. So what we are going to do is uh, define an, an extension code. So, um, so given a linear code, C over F with generating matrix M and a vector space over F, the extension code C dash of, of C is the image of the mapping M times X where X is in the, the vector space B, okay, over BK. So 
what, what this is saying is that um, we have, we can always view an extension field as a vector space over the base. So we can view it as um, K elements from, from the base field. So what we do is if to encode what we did was multiply one element of the field times this, this generating matrix uh, or, the, or the code type this matrix, what we can do is uh, simply reuse the same matrix with uh, elements from the extension to obtain like the uh, extension code. Um, this will be just to achieve like the desired security, but at least to understand like the basic construction, we won't be moving this. Uh, of course, then we need to add it because it's not it's insecure. So, um, given all this, then we can jump into the next. Okay. So now we have to build the polynomial commitment scheme. Okay, and so what we are going to have is some, uh, um, let's say that we think that we have a multi linear. Polynomial with um, n variables t of x zero x log n minus one. Okay, so we have a polynomial, and we want to be able to commit, and also as this commitment also let us like prove the evaluation of this polynomial at some uh, point of the verifier's choosing. Okay? Um, so let's let's take a look at how we could um, do this. So remember the polynomial T is just like t0 to 1 t n minus 1. So we can build as a list of coefficients. What we are going to do is create a, a matrix from the coefficients. Okay, so our matrix is going to have like uh, M0 rows and M1 columns such that M0 times M1 is equal to M. So what we do is something like arrange like T0, T1, T2, T M0, Minus one T M M zero M zero plus one two, 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 two. and so we we arrange all the elements into this this table. Now what we are going to do is we are going to view the matrix in terms of its rows. So we are going to focus on each row separately. So let's say we start with row zero. So row zero, uh, contains some of the coefficients of T. And now what we are going to do is encode row zero. And this is going to give us a new row, which we can call u zero. 
so originally um, the, the row has M1 elements and when we encode we get the rate minus one times M1 elements. Okay, so what we are doing is adding like some some redundancy. And so with this, we are going to get a new matrix U, okay, which contains like um, row zero of U, row one of U, row M zero minus one of U, okay. So um, now that we have these, these rows, what we can do is we can also see these as the first column, the second column, row, row minus one, and one minus one. Okay, so we have we have this. So what we can do is build a Merkle tree using the columns as um, leaves. So this, this is more or less like we, we did it in Prague. So this, 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 this is perhaps the encoding and all that may be easier to understand if we think it this way. So if you remember in Prague we had the portal. Then we did the LDE. The LDE is just the read sort of encoding of the uh, polynomial. So what we do is this uh, encoding. And then what we need is from the evaluations. We did the matrix. In this case, we can use, of course, all the elements to do the matrix. But I think that we can reduce the size of the tree if we just consider each column to be a different leaf. Okay? And so the way to commit it is, of course, as always, we have like the root, we go down and we go down. And so the commitment is the root. So this is the information, the um, verifier, the, the prover should send to the verifier, okay? Well, so this is like the, the, the first part. So when I want to commit, what I do is more or less what I did with prior, but instead of just taking the vector and encoding it and then building the evaluations, I arrange it first as a matrix, and then I interpret each uh, row as some polynomial, and then what I do is kind of the LD. Okay? And from each column, then I build uh, the rest. Okay, um, so the thing is, something I'd like to is to um, uh, prove the evaluation of T of X zero, X log M minus one at point, R zero, R log N minus one. Okay, so I'd like to have the evaluation over that point. So this point is going to be chosen as always by the verifier. Okay, so how can the prover uh, convince the, the verifier that um, T of R zero 
r log n minus one is simply some value s, which for example, this can be useful for the subject problem. Um, so how, how can we, we do this? So the first part is, okay. Uh, proof. So what does the prover do? First, remember we have our, our matrix T. And if we wanted to, to evaluate uh, and get um, T of R, we could view these as like doing the, the tensor product um, from, and I think here is M1 until log N minus one of one minus Ri, Ri. So we take like the tensor product of the last components we multiply this by the matrix T, and then we multiply it by the tensor product of the first components. So this, this would be something like um, doing one minus R, uh, log n minus one, one minus r, uh, one or r log n minus one. So we would have like, sorry, wrong ordering. This would be like some uh, row vector times some matrix um, times some column vector. Okay, so the prover will send uh, only a part to, to save like, send, because we don't want to send the whole matrix. Sending the whole matrix would make our um, proof short because we would have to pass everything. So instead of that, what uh, the prover is going to do is just send to the verifier this first part, okay? So the, the prover computes R times T, which is this, um, okay, so he, he computes this. And, um, and sends it to the verifier, okay? Now that the prover has, has calculated this, um, the verifier samples I queries. So remember we had these, these, this matrix. Um, sorry, some queries. And remember we had the matrix U. So this matrix contains Okay, so we, we have like all these these columns. 
So what the verifier is going to do is choose like some of these columns. Okay. So uh, of course the number of queries we have to do determines the security level. So we we would have to do as a try like choose uh, several uh, columns. And so once he, he chooses, what we have is um, sample queries and asks the prover for, so we will call this J0, uh, J i minus one. So, He asks for the columns. Okay. And then the prover sends uh, the columns plus the authentication paths. for those columns. So again, this is the same as Fry. The only thing is that um, instead of maybe sending one ele two elements from the first layer, then two elements from the second, then two elements from the next layer and so on and so forth. Now the brewer for each query has to send a whole column. Okay, so we will see that the proof is, is larger. Why? Because we have to send of order square root of the size of the polynomial elements because each column contains square root of n. If we have a square matrix, then we send like square root elements. Um, and this is like the proof. So the proof consists So the proof has, of course, well, we had the, the commitment, which is the, the root. Then we have the product of RT, um, which this is just, um, if I am not wrong, this has M1 elements, which really M1, remember is like square root of the number of conditions. Then we have like I uh, columns of, of U and these uh, columns, it has M0 elements. So we have I times M0 elements. And then of course we have uh, all the authentication paths. Okay, so this is all, all, all that we have. So this is this is the proof. The proof is going to be like longer than Fry because in Fry we, we get like a logarithmic graph. Here we only get a factor of square root. But still we will see that maybe for, for some parts at least for the prover maybe this is like faster, even though the proof can be longer. So once we have that, how can we do the verification? Okay, so now the, the verifier of course has the, the proof. He knows of course S, and in the proof, of course, he knows the, the root. Uh, and, and all the necessary information and the authentication paths. So to, to verify what he needs to do is, of course, if this is, if we are using Fiat Shamir, then the verifier first has to resample all the challenges. So the first step 
for for the verifier is in code r times t so what this is going to do since we have like linear encoding this is going to be r times u okay and so this will be like a linear combination of the elements in each column okay so this is like the, the first step um, to verifier checks the inclusion proofs so check the authentication path okay so this is to make sure that the uh, prover really sent elements to which he committed previously um, now uh, three uh, the verifier computes r times the column jk of u okay so the the verifier knows how to compute the tensor product and so he can make the linear combination of the elements contained in the column and so and and checks that the values coincide with those from step one. So in step one, we have all the columns, but we only have like the uh, linear combination. Uh, okay. So um, what we have is like this this encoding which contains like the encoding of the linear combination of of uh, all columns, and then we compare that with the linear combination of the selected. And so this, this shows that uh, in principle, they are like not lying to us. And finally, for uh, the verifier checks that R times T times R prime is equal to S where R prime is simply the tensor product of the uh, first components. Okay. So this is like the, the way to, to build like the polynomial commitment scheme. So instead of working with just one polynomial, you transform everything. And then to test uh, how things work, what we have to do is uh, take some linear combination of the columns and then perform the code. This works because the code is linear, so it doesn't matter if we first do the linear combination and then code, or we code and then take the linear combination. So um, the key idea and how everything works is pretty much related to, to Fry. Um, so this is like the, the basic ingredient. Of course, there is like one, one problem that 
uh, we have to analyze and it's maybe with the advantage of Venus is you can use different fields to uh, represent different variables and maybe express polynomial descriptions or polynomial relations over different fields. So now what we have to do is kind of modify this uh, polynomial commitment scheme to uh, to be able to handle like different uh, field sizes. And so what we have to do then is proceed by uh, uh, modifying the polynomial commitment scheme. And here, what we will have to do is add uh, fundamental notion, which is packing, which will somehow let us uh, take like field elements from one field and concatenate them to build an element of the of, uh, of an extension field. And so what we are going to do is, instead of uh, working with columns, what we are going to take is, I don't know, four columns, and think of those four columns in a concatenated form as if they were just one single field element from a larger field. Of course, then the commitment, when the verifier wants to check for the columns, he's not going to check for single columns, but rather for blocks of columns. So when he samples indices, he will sample the indices for the blocks, and he will have to do everything with the blocks, of course, there are like some things that we are going to need, like concatenated codes. Uh, and that way we will be able to handle these uh, complicated constructions. Once we have this, we will have to jump into the protocol part. So here we will have like some protocols like um, zero check, the sum check, maybe some product, a permutation argument, the lookup, and then from, from these protocols and an arithmetization scheme, we are going to be able to um, build a snark. Okay. But first, I wanted to show you like. The, the basic ingredients. So we have these fields and we have this commitment scheme, which is built from, from breakdown. Okay. Any, any, any questions? Uh, so far, I think the only question I really have is, could you explain again um, exactly of the matrix U? How you, build, how you build U? Yeah, the construction. So in, in U, what, what you do is you take one row, and that row contains M1 elements. So what you think of, the, of, of that is as a message. And then you encode. You, you can think of, for example, the, the M values as the evaluations of some polynomial. And then you do the bit solomon encoding. So you interpolate those values using the FFT. And then you evaluate the polynomial over a larger domain. So what we are doing is kind of interpolate the first M values, obtain a new polynomial, a univariate polynomial, for example, and then use the inverse, uh, the DFFT to evaluate. So it's it's just like this, this trick. Okay. So basically we take the row elements, we code them, and we yeah, so as, as you can see, it's like try in, in, in some sense, but um, instead of like 
uh, encoding and then folding and all that. Here you first arrange everything in, in a matrix and then what you do is you encode each row of the matrix. Um, it's, it's just an, another strategy. And what you try to show is somehow that um, the, the columns they, that you are given correspond to, to the encoding of the rows. Ah, oh, okay. That's what was confusing me. Correspond to the rows and the columns. So we'd say that in column moves the existence or proves the validity uh, of the column. Zero. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it, it's a bit confusing at first, but um, we, we have our blog post um, almost like ready. I, I have to do some small changes. Uh, maybe next week we can continue and analyze a little bit more in detail how we can extend this, this construction uh, to packed elements and then maybe discuss a little bit um, the code base and the, the construction in general of the protocols. So I'm sorry if it got like a little bit uh, mathy. Uh, really this, this depends on many like difficult concepts and related to coding theory, so maybe this can be a little hard to, to digest. But uh, we will take like some time in the bootcamp to discuss this and try to make sense, because really it offers like some very nice advantages in terms of performance. And if we can first reduce like the memory footprint, and then we, we get like some primitives which are like hardware friendly. Uh, then we can do like and build many, many interesting applications on top of this. So think that, for example, addition is really easy. It's just XOR, you don't need to worry about the carries or anything. Um, and really you can compute like the tensor product in, in a very efficient way. So maybe this, this construction will offer some advantages over what we, we have right now. Um, well then, so this has been like the first um, lecture on, on B news. And let's hope we can continue trying to understand um, all the paper and then be able to, to work with it. Okay, so on, on my side, I have nothing else. Uh, so if there are like no questions, then uh, have a nice weekend and see you next week where we will probably continue uh, analyzing the paper. Thanks, Diego. See you. Bye-bye.